Good morning and welcome to St Margaret's online service. Whether you've been a regular attender here for many years or if this is your first time and you're just visiting us and stopping by, you are so welcome and it's great to have you with us. This morning we're going to worship God together, we're going to pray together and we're going to hear his word as well. So we're going to have a great time and uh, it's just great to have you with us today. We do have a couple of notices um, before we start our service uh, and the first one, uh, really exciting, we have got um, a new course that we're going to be doing together as a church. Um, lots of you will remember uh, the Faith Matters one that we finished a few weeks back and just during Lent we've got a new series called Easter Matters and that's going to be happening over four Thursday evenings at the same time um, as before, 7.45 to 8.45 on Zoom um, and that's going to be starting this Thursday the 4th of March and running for four Thursdays after that. So we'd love to see as many people there as possible. If you came to Faith Matters and enjoyed it and the feedback um, that we've heard has been great, so um, if you went to that, do come along to this one. Um, but if you didn't come to Faith Matters, um, come along still. We'd love to have as many people there from the church family um, and anyone that's new to church as well to, to come and join us on that evening. Um, it's going to be a really good time all together. Uh, and secondly, do want to encourage you um, to continue to support um, Fair Trade Fortnight um, and uh, the Shipley uh, Christians Together uh, Fair Trade Initiative. And if you're on Facebook and Twitter, do get involved there. But um, yes, we're able um, when you're shopping, if you're able to um, support Fair Trade and um, buy per Fair Trade goods um, during this season and uh, onwards, then we want to encourage you to engage with this Fair Trade Fortnight. Okay, uh, so for this morning, um, we are, uh, have teaching being led by Amy Satin, um, and our sort of title today is Having Grace for Ourselves. So Amy, we're really looking forward um, to your message and what you're going to bring. So um, before we start our first song, um, let's just pray and collect our thoughts. Heavenly Father, we just want to um, take a moment to invite you in. Lord, however our week's gone, however our morning's gone, um, Lord, we just want to pause, settle ourselves, and give this time to you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be with each of us and that you would meet with each of us right now. God, we welcome you into this time pray that you would draw us closer to you, Jesus, and that we would hear more from your word today, and that you would change us more and more into your likeness, so that we might go out and speak of you to the world around us. So please be with us by your spirit, we pray now, in your name. Amen. Okay, let's have our first song of worship. There is so much bad news in the world right now, but no matter what, we have good news, and that good news has a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shame, there is good news for the world who walked away, there is good news for the doubter. Come to seek and say He's our
confess our sins to the Lord. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gift of creation. Lord, be merciful. Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us. us. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us. We have gone along with evil and dishonesty. We have turned a blind eye to racism and unfairness and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us. us. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Jesus, forgive us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus told them another story. Once a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Give me my share of the property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the youngest son packed up everything he owned and left for a foreign country where he wasted all his money in wild living. He had spent everything when a bad famine spread through that whole land. Soon, he had nothing to eat. He went to work for a man in that country and the man sent him out to take care of his pigs. He would have been glad to eat what the pigs were eating. No one gave him a thing. Finally, he came to his senses and said, my father's workers have plenty to eat and here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. The younger son got up and started back to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son and hugged him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against God in heaven and against you. 
I am no longer good enough to be called your son. But his father said to his servants, Hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Get the best calf and prepare it so he can eat and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, but has now come back to life. He was lost and now has been found. And they began to celebrate. The older son had been out in the field. But when he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants over and asked, What's going on here? The servant answered, Your brother has come home, safe and sound, and your father ordered us to kill the best calf. The older brother got so angry that he wouldn't even go into the house. His father came out and begged him to go in. But he said to his father, For years I've worked for you like a slave and have always obeyed you. But you have never even given me a little goat so that I could give a dinner for my friends. This other son of yours wasted your money on prostitutes. And now that he has come home, you ordered the best calf to be killed for a feast? His father replied, My son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we should be glad and celebrate. Your brother was dead, but he's now alive. He was lost and has now been found. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be speaking with you today. First, I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine. This is Wilbur. Uh, Wilbur Wombat, he is from Australia. Um, now, Wilbur, you were telling me um, that you were feeling a bit sad lately, is that right? Yeah. Um, you've been missing your friends, haven't you? I'm finding it a bit difficult to be apart from people and not able to go to school, haven't you? It's been quite upsetting. Oh, well, Will, but that does sound really difficult. It's really normal to feel upset um, and the struggles that are happening at the minute are happening to everybody, but it doesn't mean it's any less hurtful for you, does it? Well, Will, but when we feel upset, there is something that we can do. We can give it all to God and God is always listening to you. He's always there and he will always be with you. And if you don't know what to say to God, you can always draw him a picture or something, can't you? Or you can meet with somebody and, um, and they can pray with you. But just remember that, you're always, that God is always there with you and that he is always your friend and wants to be with you. That's really helpful, isn't it? Well, um, what was that, Wilbur? You're going to go and draw a picture now, are you? Yeah, you're going to go and draw and give it to God. That's a really good idea. Well, Wilbur, you go off and do that. You enjoy your picture. And uh, we're going to talk to the mums and dads now, aren't we? Okay. Bye then. Bye, everybody. Oh, well, that was nice to meet Wilbur, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, yeah, God tells us in the Bible that he is always with us um, and that we can talk to him any time. And if we don't know what to say, amazingly, the Holy Spirit is there to speak for us. Isn't that amazing? Well, maybe the children want to join Wilbur in drawing a picture um, or something if they would like to do that. I wonder how many of the rest of us might have used the phrases, I should be able to do this or why can't I just get myself going? or I feel like a terrible parent or friend at the minute. There's an expectation on us to make use of this lockdown time well, isn't there? Or learn an instrument, do jobs in your house, take up a new craft, all of these great ideas from people. And there's plenty that we could be doing, but there's also pressures on us um, that can stop that. There's pressures of having to homeschool children at the same time as work, keeping a house going, keeping relationships going, and for our young people trying to keep motivated with schoolwork and connected to friends. For other people, actually, the days are just repetitive and unstimulating. And for others, it's so busy that you don't get a break. It's clear that the mental effect of this pandemic is so much wider than just a fear of a virus. And how you feel about things might change from day to day as well. No two days seem to be exactly the same in terms of our feelings. Some days are absolutely fine and others just aren't. If we look at what's going on underneath the surface, this might help us a bit to understand what's happening and why we're struggling so much. 
Firstly, our bodies and minds are trying to cope with a situation that is counter to the way that we were designed. God made us to be in relationship with each other, to live in community and needing things like physical touch and human interaction. That is a part of who we are and what we're made to be. We're also designed in a way that helps us to react to stresses when they happen. We get a rush of adrenaline when we're scared, leading to a racing heart, heightened awareness, slow digestion, things which are all very effective when we need to run away from something or fight something when we need those short bursts of energy. But when we feel stressed for a long period of time through busy lives and high pressure, as well as that social interaction separation, this response from our bodies can start affecting things like concentration, energy levels, mood and sleep. With lockdown going on for so long, we can sometimes feel as well like we don't have the energy or motivation to do anything. I've certainly had times when I just couldn't face doing anything more than sitting in front of the TV all afternoon. Not exactly productive, but I just didn't have the energy behind me to do anything. When you're doing less activity, like lying down or sitting down, your body is taking in less oxygen. So less oxygen is getting into your blood, which increases a feeling of tiredness. When this is the case for long periods of time, when we're, when we're cramped up, when we can't move, we can't get out, we're not stimulated, you can end up in a cycle of feeling more tired from doing nothing. Your body is tired from a lack of stimulation and movement. So why are we all struggling so much? Well, all of that together makes for a group of people who are not at their best, but are just reacting to situation, the situation that we've been put in. So what can we do about this? Well, Kim gave us some great tips last week, including getting regular exercise, eating a balanced diet, getting into a good sleep pattern. These are all really important to keep us well. But the thing I want to focus on today is also having grace for ourselves too. None of us are at our best when we're under pressure. So telling yourself I should be able to or feeling guilty is not helping and is not making things any better. Sometimes all we can do when we're under pressure is just to make it through the next week, the next day or sometimes even the next hour. And we need to have grace for ourselves at those times to be able to do that. Just taking small steps in the right direction might be all we can do, and that's okay. God shows us incredible grace in the way that he treats us. And this demonstration of how we're to treat others and ourselves is what we should be looking to. He shows us kindness and forgiveness when we make mistakes, throwing his loving arms around us when we turn back to him. Many of us will be familiar with the parable that Jesus told of the lost son, which we heard earlier. The son was trying to live his own life, trying to sort out his own mess that he'd got himself into and thinking his father would reject him as his son. In fact, all the father wanted was for his son to return to him, no matter what he'd done. The father didn't need an explanation and he didn't need his son to sit in misery before he forgave him and loved him. Instead, when the father saw him, his son coming from a distance, he ran to him, flinging his arms around him, celebrating his return and loving him. He offered him absolute grace for the things that he'd done wrong. And this is what God offers to us. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We all make mistakes. We have all fallen short at one time or another. But God gave us the free gift of his love and forgiveness, and all he wants us to do in return is to accept this free gift. We know what grace looks like because Jesus demonstrated it to us, no longer condemning us for mistakes, but offering forgiveness. 
Romans 8 verse 1 says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I remember learning this at a camp I went to as a child and it was just drilled in um, and so good to remember that verse. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are forgiven and we need to live in that forgiveness, allowing God to take our burdens and rest in him. It's easy to beat ourselves up about how we're responding to this pandemic, to think we're not achieving or being a good enough parent or carer. But God's grace is sufficient for each of us. We need to give all of our feelings, our thoughts, our challenges to God, and he will hold them. We don't have to carry that burden ourselves. He is always there and waiting for us to reach out to him. A bit like what Wilbur was needing to do. We need to make that choice to allow him to take the reins and then we can step into the security that he offers. So my question to you today is, are you accepting his offer of grace? Are you receiving the compassion and love that he wants to show you? We are also a church family. We look out for each other and want to share life with each other, the good and the bad. That might mean taking it in turns to prop each other up at the minute, but that's what we do as a church. That's what the church family is. God has given us the incredible extended family of people to love and support each other. And it will be a wonderful day when we can all be back in church together. But until then, keep in touch with the people around you. Keep coming back to the Lord with all that's on your mind and allow him to take the strain. I'll just finish with this verse from Hebrews 4. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need.
Lord, please help those in the government who are making decisions about opening back schools and easing other restrictions, but especially for those um, going back to school on March the 8th, that you just help them to be safety um, and not as many people testing positive for COVID, um, and you just keep the number of cases down and just help give people making decisions wisdom on whether it's right or not to ease restrictions or not to ease them but yeah just just give wisdom to those around and help people to be safe from the virus and a bit of normality to come back into life soon amen amen dear lord we also lift to you the issue of vaccines and that there's not enough of them and we pray for that in the uk that hopefully they'll be delivered quickly so that vulnerable people can get them in time. And we also pray for other countries who haven't got them and there's not an even distribution so that many people who are in great need of them don't have them. Amen. Lord, we also raise to you the issue of climate change. We know that this is a big problem at the moment and that we, don't of we often don't care about it as much as we should. So please just help us to look after your planet and be more responsible in the way we take care of it and just find more sustainable ways to live. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been great to gather together and, and worship together. And just as we finish, just want to remind you about the Easter Matters course starting this Thursday at 7.45 on Zoom. Um, but just to close, um, a final blessing before we have our, our last song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So let's have our final song of worship. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love. For me, oh, his love for me, whom the sun sets free, oh, is free.
in who you say I am. 